Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new. My name is Haley and today I have a book haul for you guys and I didn't anticipate having a book haul this quickly. However, my family knows that I love to read and as I get older, the more and more lazy my family gets with coming up with gift ideas. So a lot of the things I got for Christmas this year were gift cards to Half Price Books, Barnes & Noble, things like that. And so, I mean, what's a girl to do other than buy books when you get book-related gift cards? I have about 20 books here. I'm definitely not going to be purchasing as many books. As you guys know, I am starting to utilize my public library a lot, which has been a really good experience so far. But I tried to focus my book buying on books that my library didn't doesn't have. Anyways, let's go ahead and get into the books that I got for like Christmas presents basically. So first up we have Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner and this is a memoir about a young Korean American girl and her experience growing up as an Asian American. And I have just heard that this book is fantastic. So, so good, and I feel like this could literally be like a five star. I love memoirs so much, and I've also heard that this is really heartbreaking, so I'm a little nervous, but you guys know I love a book that will break my heart, so I have high hopes for Crying in H Mart for sure. Next up, we have another memoir that I have heard will break my heart, but I am ready for it. I have Know My Name by Chanel Miller, and if you don't know, Chanel Miller is the Jane Doe in the Brock Turner case. This was a sexual assault trial that went on and Chanel was known as Emily Doe while the trial was happening. She had a victim impact statement but she did not come forward to the public about who she was but she became kind of disillusioned with that process and seeing her words out there but not having her face with those words and so she decided to tell her story and also tell the story of how hard and heartbreaking it was going through that trial process and not feeling like justice was served properly. I've heard that her verbiage and her prose is just like amazing and I've also heard that the audiobook is super super good for this so I'm gonna try and get the audiobook from my library and listen along while I'm reading it. She is the one who is uh, doing the audiobook and I've heard that it's just fantastic and I can't wait to read this book. Um, I love a memoir as you guys know. Next up we have Bunny by Mona Wad and this is a story about a woman named Samantha who does a graduate program at a small college. You know we're feeling the dark academia already but basically it's called Bunny because at this college within her uh, graduate writing program there's a group of girls who are very exclusive you know the exclusivity another check mark for dark academia she gets sucked into their world and things basically just get weird from there so from everyone who's read this i've heard that this is a super super weird book and i have heard that it's kind of similar to heathers if you've ever seen that that is also a very weird 80s movie so i'm very interested to see where this book takes me people either love this or hate this and i guess it's kind of horror in a way so i truly have no idea where this book is going to take me because nobody really gives it a full explanation and I realize that I'm doing that to you right now as well but I haven't read it so I I'm not 100% sure what journey this will go down. Next up we have We Ride Upon Sticks by Quan Berry and this book I didn't even know about a month or two ago but Books and Lala just like obsesses over this book and I recently started obsessing over her so I figured that I would pick this up and I'm really intrigued by this book because it is witchy and 80s themed which I feel like I haven't read that many books set in the 80s so I'm very interested to see kind of how that feels in a book setting. I have read Malibu Rising which was 80s themed but I haven't read anything other than that I don't think so anyways this is a story about a girls field hockey team somehow it involves witches I 
I wish I could give more elaboration, but that is basically it. It just says that in this town, um, which is the home of the original witch trials back in the 1600s, you know, Salem witch trial type of stuff, Danvers Falcons will do anything to make it to the state finals, even if it means tapping into some devilishly dark powers. This sounds like a great fall read. Why did I buy a book that I'm probably not going to read until the fall in January? I don't know, but I knew that I wanted it and I knew my library didn't offer it, so it just made sense. It was one of the things on my list that I couldn't get from the library and thus I'm adding it to my collection. Next we have If I Had Your Face by Frances Cha. I'm really really excited about this book so this is a book set in seoul i believe it's in south korea yes seoul and it follows four uh south korean women so some of the themes it surrounds interestingly enough are like k-pop but also you know uh plastic surgery and how common that is and then i know one of the main characters in this book works at kind of like a parlor where you entertain men. So it follows a lot of commentary on feminism in South Korea and um, the patriarchy, what it, all the expectations of what women should look like and be like, and you know, all of those expectations in this setting. I'm not sure if this is set current day or if it's any time in the past, uh, recent past, not 100% sure there, but I've heard really really good things about this book and this cover is gorgeous i love the like color grading is that the, the word i don't know the inverted colors how it's like yellow and pink it just looks so good i feel like the last several books have been pink we have a pink theme going on today all right next up we have a very popular book and that is the song of achilles by madeline miller and this is a Greek myth retelling of Achilles and Patroclus who are in the Greek myth they are best friends but in this retelling they are lovers. This follows you know not only the mythology but their love story also the wars and just like the political intrigue I believe as well and I've heard that this book is beautiful and wonderful makes you cry so many people love it and I am scared to pick it up because of that but I'm also scared to pick it up because everyone says oh, we like, you don't need to know the Greek mythology, you don't need to know anything. But then you hear every once in a while somebody be honest and say, no, I was confused, you do kind of need to know it. And I think that would be me because I literally know nothing about Greek mythology. Like, I was confused when I read Percy Jackson sometimes. So I am a little concerned that I will be confused. I guess I could just like look it up, but I don't really wanna have to do background reading. So that has deterred me from this book for a while, but I figured I might as well pick it up. I cannot, like it's on hold by like 80 people in front of me at the library. So, you know, it's gonna be read at some point, but I could see this as being something that's on my TBR for a while and me continually putting it off because I don't want to be disappointed. Next up we have The Last Mrs. Parrish by Liv Constantine and this is like one of the quintessential thrillers. I don't think it's like one of the oldest ones. I think it was written in the 2010, oh 2018. Why did I feel like this book was like written in like 2010, 2012, something like that? Anyways. I feel like this is kind of like Gone Girl, like I feel like a lot of people talk about this book and it's a lot of people's like book that got them into thrillers. I think I'm going to try to pick up this book in the summer because I mean hello summer vibes just off the top. Also I want to be her like hello. So I don't 100% know what this follows. I think it's just a woman who kind of is obsessed with Mrs. Parrish that inserts herself into their life, becomes their friend, but she's got some skeletons in her past. She is maybe a little obsessive, kind of an obsession story. I love a thriller, you guys know this, and this is one of the most like widely popular ones. So I'm interested to see if I will enjoy it or if I will find it predictable. Let me know what y'all think of this one down below if you've read it, because I feel like a lot of people have, so I'm interested to see what y'all have to say about it. Next we have Finley Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. Really didn't know who wrote this book, but 
Anyways, Finlay Donovan is Killing It is about a woman with a child and a divorced husband, and she is just going through it. She's struggling financially, and she is a writer, needs her next book to be doing good, and so she meets with her agent at a Panera Bread and is talking about her next idea for a novel. Well, someone overhears and is like, hey, that's, that's like murdery. Are you are you a are you a hit woman? Um, here's ten thousand dollars. Kill my husband, and she's like, no no no, I'm not a, I'm not a hit woman. And the woman's like, yeah, you're not a hit woman. Anyways, this is where we live. Um, you can kill him anytime, and maybe she does it. I really don't know. I mean, I'm assuming she does it. I've heard this is a cozy mystery. She gets herself wrapped up into some situations, and I've heard it's funny, but still like thriller mystery like so I'm interested to see how that goes I feel like I haven't read many cozy mysteries so I am very intrigued by that type of book and I feel like I'm gonna love this but I don't know it's another one of those books I just feel like I am hyping up every single book I pick up now and uh, it just makes my expectations too high and then I'm let down so I just I'm afraid of that with this one too Someone tell me to stop. Y'all need to stop piping up books, okay? Okay. Next up we have a book that I have heard nothing but good things about and that is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwake Emezi. This book is about a Nigerian family and obviously the death of a son, but it is a son that they didn't really understand or know completely. Basically in the beginning of the book um, he shows up dead on their doorstep and it follows from there. So I think there's going to be a lot of interesting dynamics in this book spoken about and I believe that this also has a lot of themes of trans experiences so I, I'm, I could be wrong but I'm pretty sure that that is a theme in this book and that is part of why he was not super involved with his family. Actually so much shorter than I was expecting it to be. It's just over 200 pages or it's about 250 pages which is a pretty short book so I feel like I'll be able to get through it really quickly but I just heard this is beautiful and heart-wrenching and like I said if there's heartbreak and sadness and family dynamics probably gonna like it. Next up we have a thriller that I'm highly anticipating that is The Plot by Jean Humph Corlitz. Is it Jean or John? Okay it's Jean not John. I don't know why when I saw that I, I just in my head I was like ah French John. Anyways by Jean Humph Corlitz. So this is a story about a professor who has a class whatever. He, obviously he's a professor. So he has a class and I believe it's kind of like a fiction writing class and there's a really arrogant student who is like, I have the best idea in the world, the best plot, the best synopsis and you're going to be blown away. And this guy's already a little arrogant so the professor's just like, okay, whatever. Well, the student explains the plot and the professor's like, holy crap, that is actually really, really good. Kind of forgets about it, life moves on, the semester ends, yada yada. Well, later on, the professor finds out that that student died. And he's like, did he ever write that book? He did not. The student did not write that book. And so the professor steals the plot that the student uh, gave. Somebody finds out, somebody knows the truth, and there is a thriller that goes on from there. So that is just like a strange, you know, premise, and I'm very intrigued by it. There's also a book within a book in here, and that sounds awesome. So that plot that we, you know, know of is put into this book as well because they excerpt the book in here, which is really cool. I think it's really, you know, impressive when authors are able to do that. And I think this book kind of discusses authorship, idea ship, um, what constitutes plagiarism and stealing. Like is stealing an idea really plagiarizing? Is it just, you know, kind of grit morally unethical but not really wrong? That is the plot. I want to read it really badly, so 
hopefully I will soon. So next up we have another thriller, mystery thriller. You know I love that. And um, it is gonna be The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. And I have read one other Ruth Ware before and I really, really liked it. I think I love thrillers and mysteries set in the UK like the most. I mean, not really. I mean, it doesn't matter where it's set, but something about a thriller set in the UK is just so cozy and makes my heart happy even though you know death is happening like that's a little weird but anyways in this Ruth Ware story it follows a woman who sees an ad for a live-in nanny position and she it's like a really good salary so she's like yep I'm about it applies interviews takes the job and it seems great like it's like a smart house which is super cool so she's like man like this job is extra easy now but Basically, it's like smart house gone crazy, smart house gone wrong. There's something wrong with this house, I do believe. Um, and then at the end of it, not the end of it, I think it probably says it right at the beginning because it says it in the synopsis, she finds herself in prison for murder. She's like, no, 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 this, this, no, this shouldn't have happened. Um, and I've heard from so many people that this is Ruth Ware's best book. I... Personally, I really liked In a Dark Dark Wood, so I feel like if this is even better, then fantastic. I am down for a fun murder mystery, and this is an annoyingly reflective book, so I'm going to put it down now. Next up, we have The Ravens by Cass Morgan and Danielle Page, and it follows a girl who goes to college, and she is really interested in this one sorority, and she's like, I am pledging that sorority it's happening and she ends up doing it and then realizes it is literally a witch's coven and there's a little bit of rivalry between this girl and the like head president of the sorority itself um and so there's a little bit of like a quarrel there but just that premise i was not in a sorority in college but it just seems so interesting to me so intriguing i've never read a story about a sorority so i'm like Yep, yep, this is going to the top of my fall TBR. Next up, we have a fantasy title, and that is This Savage Song by Victoria Schwab, and this is a fantastical world in which violence breeds monsters. So whatever level of violence you commit, um, a monster of that caliber is created from that like evil. So it's a really interesting premise and I really don't know what is going to come from that but I'm excited to read it and I like that it's a short and sweet duology and not like a trilogy or something even more than that because I don't think I can commit to super long series in fantasy, um, even though I've kind of already committed myself to a couple, but at least this is a shorter fantasy series, you know? Next we have a classic, which I am shocked I haven't picked up yet, but it is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is the quintessential vampire that paved the way for all the vampires after him. But interestingly enough, this story is actually told through letters and diary entries, which I think is really unique and kind of ahead of its time. I feel like that wasn't as common back in the day, but you know, it follows Dracula, the vampire, as he goes from his home in Transylvania, his castle, to um, London and how he, you know, the sin and love and the darkness that just encompassed his life and him trying to survive, trying to find blood to live on. Yeah, you know, just vampire things. Now we have a couple of stories that I've already actually read, so I will try to be short and sweet about them. First, we have The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I literally read this in one day. It is about, like it sounds, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Um, she is a old Hollywood starlet and it just chronicles her life through her relationships. And it's basically an interview where she talks about the good, the bad, and the ugly of her life and who her true love was. Next, we have Green Glass House by Kate Milford, which is a very whimsical, 
wintry middle grade about Milo, whose family owns a hotel which actually houses smugglers, interestingly enough. And it's basically a mystery. It happens around Christmas time, and normally around this time of year, the family's smuggler hotel business uh, slows down, like there's no one there. But this year, a ton of guests show up, and they all act like they don't know each other, but they're acting a little weird, like they do kind of seem like they know each other, and Milo wants to get to the bottom of this and the mysteriousness that's going on with all these guests and he does and the mystery to this book was really well done especially for a book targeted towards younger audiences i was really impressed by this as someone who's not normally obsessed with middle grades i actually really loved this one next we have no exit by taylor adams i read this during winter ween so if you want more thoughts on this book um you can go check out my winter ween vlog but No Exit is a story about a girl whose mom was just diagnosed with cancer and is going into surgery and she is at college and needs to like get back to see her mom. She's like, holy no, like this is, you know, that's a hard time in your life. And so there is a blizzard coming, but she is like, it's okay, like I'll make it through, whatever. I, she was born and raised in the Rockies. She's still in the Rockies. She's like, it's fine, I'll make it home. Well, she starts driving and realizes this this weather's getting really bad. She's not going to make it. So she pulls aside to a rest stop. But then she realizes in one of the people's car, there's a couple people at this rest stop. In one of the people's car, there is a child in a cage. And she, being the, you know hero type is like i need to save this child i need to figure this out like who did this what is going on how can i help like she wants to get to the bottom of it which you know should she have just like waited until the storm passed and then called 911 and had law enforcement take care of it sure but she's not gonna do that that would be a boring story so no exit chronicles her trying to get this child to safety it is action-packed so good this was a five-star read for me next up we have the push by ashley audrain which is a story about a young wife who um her and her husband decide they want to have a baby and so they do and she has a very strange relationship with her daughter she doesn't feel like she is connecting with her daughter not only when she's a baby but also when she grows up she just feels like there's a disconnect and something is wrong with her daughter and everyone's telling her no like you're overthinking it but then she has a son and she feels really close and connected with the son and she's like okay i swear i'm not crazy like something is going on i don't feel a connection with my daughter and it follows that relationship and follows you know themes of postpartum depression and questioning um mothers and forcing certain relationships and generational trauma like it really follows a lot of different themes and I loved the idea of this book but it kind of just didn't end up working out for me unfortunately but a lot of people do really love the push next I have a couple of nonfiction. first I have the new Jim Crow which is basically about mass incarceration and how um, a lot of laws and regulations put in place in the US disproportionately affect people of color, specifically black men and women, and how the number of people that we have in prisons today is unparalleled anywhere around the world at this point. And it's concerning and it's not productive for our society. And I've heard that this is just a must read at this point. And you guys know I love nonfiction that talks about important topics like this. So I'm excited to pick it up. The other nonfiction that I have is The Gene by Siddhartha Mukherjee. And this is a book all about genetics. And I read The Emperor of All Maladies by Siddhartha Mukherjee in the past. And I absolutely loved that book. It was a five-star nonfiction read for me. It was so beautifully told and so informative while still being captivating. And I'm hoping that that is exactly what this is. It might end up being a little bit similar to um she has her mother's laugh which is another nonfiction i've read um, which is all about like heredity and genetics but i think this is going to be focused a little bit more on the genetic side of things um and on like the science portion of it not that that one didn't talk about science because it definitely delved a lot in the science but i think this one might be a little bit more about like how the gene itself works and then also the history as well i don't know i'm expecting it to be 
kind of the same idea as uh, the Emperor of All Maladies and if it's anywhere near that good then it's gonna be fantastic and yeah I can't wait to pick this one up as well and then finally I have four book of the month books that I have already read um, I have three other book of the month books but they're actually at my parents house so I won't be talking about those today but I did receive those and talk about those in one of my other videos recently uh, but first we have reckless girls by Rachel Hawkins this is a murder mystery whodunit set on a very stranded deserted island where you're cut off from the rest of the world I thought the first half of this book was okay but then it got really good at the end so it ended up being a pretty good interesting mystery thriller that I would definitely recommend next we have Fiona and Jane by Jean Chin Ho and this follows two best friends throughout their childhood and adulthood and just kind of is a bunch of short stories that intertwine together and really looks at family and identity, sexuality, relationships. And this was really interesting. I really, you know, enjoyed both of the characters and felt for them. And I would definitely suggest this. And also, I'm obsessed with this cover. Next, we have Love and Other Disasters by Anita Kelly. This is a romance that actually takes place on a competition cooking show, which was an interesting flair. It follows two characters, one of whom identifies as non-binary. So it had great commentary on that. And it had a storyline not only with their relationship, but also with being non-binary and familial expectations and things of that sort however it was a romance and romances don't usually work very well for me and this one was just okay um, I, I don't know how much I believed in their relationship and their chemistry but it was still a you know lighthearted read and if you enjoy romances I would suggest this holiday swap uh, by Maggie Knox was a romance that worked a little bit better for me. This is a Christmas love story where there are two twin sisters, identical twin sisters, and one of them works in her family bakery in their hometown, and one of them is in LA, is a co-host of a food reality show and the sister in LA has a head injury and loses her sense of taste and smell and so she asks her sister to switch places with her and take over and so they do it's completely like not a believable storyline but I still really like this story I thought it was cozy and sweet and very perfect obviously for the holiday time and you know I also appreciated that there wasn't too many steamy scenes there was also so much baking in this story which I thought really added to the atmosphere of the book which was fantastic I enjoyed the holiday swap I gave it three stars because you know it is a little cheesy but I actually really enjoyed it it was like a Hallmark movie in a book. Okay, you guys, so those are all of the books that I have to talk to you guys about. Um, I definitely am not going to be purchasing books as much from now on. It's just, you know, like I said, I'm gonna be focusing on my library and I've already started doing that. I have like a whole list of things that they offer at my library that I am going to be looking into and reading and I'm excited about these books, I'm excited about library books, I'm excited about the books that are already on my shelf. So anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, a thumbs up definitely helps me out, so I would really appreciate one. But that is going to be it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!